are watching Germantown Municipal Television, your source for everything Germantown. Welcome to Focus on Germantown. I'm Mayor Mike Palazzolo. And it's my pleasure to have this opportunity each month to share the great things going on in the city of Germantown. Much has been made lately of all the new shopping choices in Germantown. As a city, we are proud of that growth. However, today we're going to focus on another area of pride in our city. Here in Germantown, we are fortunate to have educational choices and opportunities available for students of all ability levels. Representatives from three of the schools located in our city are here to tell their story. I'm sure you will agree these schools add to the rich tapestry of our community. With us today are representatives from Bodine School, Memphis Oral School for the Deaf, and Madonna Learning Center. All of these schools were started somewhere else in the Mid-South, but chose to relocate to Germantown, and we are pleased to have them. Founded in 1972, the Bodine School moved to Germantown in 1979. Bodine School is the only school in the Mid-South and all of Tennessee solely committed to teaching children with reading-related learning differences and dyslexia to read. Please welcome the Director of Advancement Admission at Bodine School, Brenda Berry, to focus on Germantown. Thank you for joining us today, Brenda. Thank you for having me. It's great that you're here. Tell Thank us a you. little bit about Bodine School that our viewers may not know. Sure. Well, Bodine School is a um, very wonderful independent school here in Germantown. Uh, we have been serving students with learning differences related to um, reading or other language-based uh, disabilities like dyslexia. Uh, since 1972. So it's our 43rd year and it has been an incredible experience just being in Germantown. Um, we're kind of nestled in one of the beautiful neighborhoods and um, we used to be a really well-kept secret and that has changed recently and we really have become a true asset to the community not just in Germantown but all over the Mid-South. Well I agree. You engage the community well and you're not a well-kept secret anymore. Everyone knows about you. Uh, tell us a little bit about what the Bodine School does uh, beyond its day program, so to speak. Sure. So we are a school for students in first through eighth grade who have a diagnosis of dyslexia or a related reading difference. Um, the day program is a typical school as far as um, having all subjects covered um, and, and a, a true school experience. Um, the specials we have include PE, music, art, and an innovation lab, which is truly uh, tapping into the strengths of our students. Beyond that, uh, every June we hold a summer reading program, and that's for students both at Bodine or any student in the community um, in the Mid-South who either has a little bit of a struggle with reading, writing, comprehension, or they really just want to get a little bit ahead and strengthen those skills. Um, we also have a new program that we started a little over a year ago. It's called the Erica Center at Bodine School. And that is the uh, outreach portion of the school where we can offer tutoring and remediation services to students who may not come to Bodine, uh, but they might need a little extra assistance. Um, and we also train teachers all over the Mid-South area to use Bodine's approach to teaching so they can then use it in their classroom. And then the Bodine um, approach and the impact of our school is spread much further beyond our uh, school walls. Just to elaborate a little yeah. bit on that, you recently were awarded a significant grant to be able to take those teaching methods yeah. out into uh, the urban fabric of this region. Can you elaborate a little bit on that? Absolutely. We were very pleased to have an anonymous donor come forward with a $600,000 grant. And with that money, we are uh, actually partnered with teachers from Teach for America, as well as the KIPP schools. And it's a beautiful opportunity for Bodine to um, take our unique approach to instruction using multi-sensory approaches and train teachers how those uh, approaches can be effective in their classroom. And 
And what we're able to do is, throughout the year, work with the teachers and, and see, is it working? And what, what's working well? What do we need to adjust so it can help in the classroom? And in return, we're able to get feedback from those teachers and continue to improve and enhance the program, um, the training program that we offer. And already, the, the data um, that we're seeing is just outstanding. Well, that's great news. So you take you take Bodine a little bit further than the city limits of Germantown Absolutely. to the entire community, so to speak. Absolutely. Well, share with us a little bit about, uh, do you take full education beyond the language arts remediation? What else do you offer? Yeah, so we really, uh, I feel like Bodine does a wonderful job of uh, tapping into each student's uh, individual need, but also their strengths and interests. Um, we have students, as I mentioned before, the, there's an innovation lab. And we have so many students who are so unique in how they approach problems solving and that's not necessarily something that can be nurtured in a traditional classroom but through the innovation lab they're able to look at a situation and truly come up with an out-of-box um, approach to how to solve that problem um, they have to come up with how to uh, build a, a, a bridge using raw materials um, spaghetti uh, uncooked spaghetti <laughs> and the things they can create uh, truly show why they are the future leaders of our community Great, can you share with our audience, uh, where do your students come from? Yeah, that's a great question. So we definitely attract a lot of students from Germantown, Collierville, um, the city of Memphis, uh, both East, uh, East Memphis, Midtown, Downtown. We also have students from multiple cities in Mississippi and even in Arkansas. So the, the stretch uh, that Bodine is able to reach out to many students has really been phenomenal. And again, with us reaching into the community with teacher training, uh, our, our reach is just continuing to expand. Well, great. We have time for a couple more questions. Sure. Uh, how, how long are students at Bodine School? So we do have a unique program in that when a student comes into Bodine, they our goal is to get them out as soon as they're ready. So it's called the transitional model that we use. A student is, uh, comes in, they receive the Orton-Gillingham multi-sensory approach to instruction. And it's done through an IEP, so each student has an individualized education plan. And that plan is going to have goals every Every year. Uh, usually it's about three years, sometimes four years uh, needed for certain students, where they're going to get remediation, they're going to be given the tools that they can access for life to continue their academic success into their professional careers. And so in that uh, approximately three years, sometimes four years, our students come into Bodine, they have that transformation take place, and then they are set for boundless success uh, once they leave us. Oh great. Well, we have time for one more short uh, question. Sure. We're both in the same profession in development yeah. and we never have enough time to ask yeah. uh, and I'm only giving you about 30 seconds. <laughs> Tell us how the community can help Bodine School, whether sure. it's a big event coming up or sure. making a gift. I appreciate that. Uh, uh, anyone interested in helping Bodine or learning more is so encouraged to visit our website at bodineschool.org. Um, in February, we have a fantastic event. It's called the Bowtie Bash. And it's not just a fundraiser. It is a huge celebration of Bodine, of our students, our teachers, and everyone in the community is welcome to uh, attend and also just contribute in any way. Great. Thank yeah. you so much. Thanks for being here today, Brenda. We appreciate your dedication to helping those students reach their full reading potential. When we come back, we will meet Teresa Swartz from the Memphis Oral School for the Deaf. Please stay with us. Right, mi cariño. So like I said, everything I learned about cooking, I learned from grandma's empanadas. Shall we go again? Yep. Mix beef with the onions, the onions with the peppers, the peppers with the paprika, the paprika, the garlic, the garlic with the oregano, the oregano with the cumin. Got it? Got it. Throw in the olives, stir, season, stir again, pour out the flour, roll out the dough, make a circle, drop in a fistful of filling, fold over, press down, and ta-da! Hmm. Most parenting is hard to do in just two minutes. But two minutes twice a day making sure they brush is easier, and it could help save them from a lifetime of tooth pain. Don't worry, 74 people were picked before me in the NFL draft. To fight childhood obesity, United Way and the NFL are helping kids play at least 60 minutes a day. Okay, time for the team obstacle course. Yay! What this place needs is more healthy kids. To get involved or donate, go to unitedway.org slash play60. 
Now I get it. You are watching Germantown Municipal Television, your source for everything Germantown. Welcome back to Focus on Germantown. The Memphis Oral School for the Deaf was founded in 1959 with the help of the Exchange Club of East Memphis. MOSD has had several homes throughout the Mid-South over the years. But in March of 2007, MOSD found a permanent home in a specifically designed facility on the campus of Kingsway Christian Church here in Germantown. Executive Director of Memphis Oral School for the Deaf, Teresa Swartz, is here to tell us about MOSD. Teresa, so glad to have you here. Thank you so much. We're old friends and it's so good to have a conversation <laughs> it's so again. Fun to have this. Tell us a little bit about MOSD. We love having you in Germantown. Give us a little update. Okay. MOSD stands for Memphis Oral School for the Deaf, and the oral component of that is what kind of makes us unique. Um, we don't use sign language with our children. Every one of our children wears some sort of hearing device, either a cochlear implant or a powerful hearing aid that gives them access to sound, and once they can hear, they begin their first day like a newborn baby. So if there are two when they get the appropriate device, they're still like a newborn baby, and we try to catch them up so that they can go into kindergarten with their hearing peers. Well, I tell you what, you know, every time I've visited and take the tour, I mean, it's a magical place. So how early do the do you get children? Um, and then how long may they stay with you, so to speak? Okay, they start as soon as they get the diagnosis, which is often in the first 24 hours of life. So imagine you're a parent and you've just been in labor and you give birth to this beautiful little baby you can't see anything wrong and somebody comes in and says you know your baby failed the newborn hearing screening so you need to come back in three weeks so you just sort of dismiss it go on with your life learn all that you can about parenting and then three weeks later you go back for a test and they confirm the hearing loss that's where we step in and help the parents make sure that they have the appropriate device and then help them learn how to teach their child at home and begin the process of helping their child learn to listen and talk. Well, please uh, help our audience understand a little bit about your services and the services that you provide to uh, your children. Okay, so every one of our children um, in, in this preschool gets speech therapy every day, listening therapy every day, and then they're in classroom for the remainder of the day for just a typical preschool experience. Lots of hands-on learning. We've been carving pumpkins all week <laughs> long and uh, making things with apples and just all the things that you would do in a normal preschool. But in addition to that, we also have a clinic um, that we can see children from outside. So if your child needs speech therapy or a speech language evaluation or audiological testing, they don't have to have a hearing loss to do that, they can come to us and we have clinic in the afternoon. Well, and uh, similar to a question I asked our last guest, uh, tell us where your students, your children come from. It's not just Germantown, no, is it? It's everywhere. Uh, we just recently got a child from as far away as Brownsville, so they drive an hour every day to get to school, Senatobia, all over Mississippi and Arkansas. So we do it, it, the same as Bodine School. We serve children from all over the Mid-South. It's incredible the work that you do, and I know in uh, this past year um, you had a, a football player come and visit your campus, and everyone was excited. Share a little bit of that uh, experience. Right. His name is T. Shepard, and he plays for Ole Miss, and he came, and it was very touching because it even changed his life. He said, you know, now I see that I can inspire other people. I've always just dealt with my hearing loss the best way I could, but now I see all these other little faces and I can, I can inspire them. So that was just an amazing opportunity. The parents were so happy to see someone who had taken that disadvantage and turned it into an advantage and, and had gone on and to achieve his dreams. Well, for those that haven't had a chance to visit your school, you alluded to it a little bit earlier. Just share with us, what is a typical day like for a day uh, for your children, your students? Okay, they come in and we begin with morning music because it gets everybody off the ground and running and gets everybody in a happy mood, teachers included. Um, then we jump in and uh, there's a you know calendar time and a group activity and then they're pulled out for therapy, 30 minutes of speech therapy every day, 30 minutes of listening therapy every day. And then we do typical language building activities um, you know, like I said, pumpkin carving or whatever, art activities, music. We have um, 
creative movement. We do, uh, we have some people that come in from outside to, to do those activities with our children. And then there's recess and lunch and a short nap and then we're back at it in the afternoon until the parents pick them up. So it's a typical school day from 8.30 to 3, just like everybody else. Wow, that's incredible. Now, you know, the theme of this show, um, all of the, of the schools are nonprofits. So please help us understand a little bit about how you get your funding through the year and some of maybe your funding needs that you might have. Right. That's always our biggest challenge. I mean, we've got the staff that we need to achieve these goals. The parents are on board. Everybody's engaged. It's the funding that's the piece that's always critical. And so we have two fundraising events. We have a golf tournament that we just completed about three weeks ago. And then we have a, um, uh, an event called the Speakeasy in April. And it's here in Germantown at the Great Hall. And it's really a fun event. It's roaring, roaring 20s themed. And it's just a great night. Well, and I've been there uh, to it many times. It uh -huh. is a fun it evening. Fun. And it gets you, and oftentimes you bring some of your alumni back. And do you want to... Can you share some of your alumni stories that you have? Some of, I guess they're all success oh, stories, but some of those. Okay, so I've been in this field for all of my adult life, and it's a really, really long time, but I'm not going to tell you how long. <laughs> but I have lived to see my children come back and tell me about their adult lives and their successes. So I have one that is doing his medical residency in Connecticut. I've got one that just graduated from pharmacy school and is uh, got a, you know, PhD in pharmacy. I've got another one that is working as a public speaker for a cochlear implant company. So those are, that's a dream for me to see my own students go and, and become what they want to be. And, you know, it gives us all hope to continue on and, and help them do now, that. The children that, that you serve, um, it, is there tuition or is there a pay as need? How, how is that? It's a sliding fee scale. Okay. It's a sliding fee scale and no one pays the actual cost. The actual cost is about $50,000 per child per year. No one, no one pays that. And so that's why we do the fundraisers to make up the difference between the cost and what the parent can pay. Well, we have time for, for one more question uh, and I will just preface it by saying we're so glad that you are in our city. It's a real joy to visit. You leave inspired every time that you're on your campus and every time I drive by and see the horse and, and he has the cochlear implant yes. as well. But you know, can you share, we have an opportunity for about 30 seconds to tell people how to get involved and how to help you. Go to our website, it's www.mosdkids.org. We have a wish list, we have uh, a, a volunteer opportunities. We love to have people just come for a tour. If you have a morning three, I'll make you a cup of coffee and we'll take a tour. Great. That is great. Thank you, Teresa. After this short break, we will talk to Joe Gilbert, the Executive Director of the Madonna Learning Center, about the inspirational students who attend yet another amazing school here in Germantown. So they say it's a man's world? I don't see anybody's name on it. While they were doing their thing, we slowly changed all that. Today, women can do anything men can do. And there's one thing we're even better at. Wildfires. That's all Smokey wants for his 70th birthday. You are watching Germantown Municipal Television, your source for everything Germantown. We're back to talk to the director of the Madonna Learning Center. In 1969, three Benedictine sisters from Ferdinand, Indiana, opened the doors of Madonna Day School in Midtown with 21 students. In 1996, the school moved to Germantown and became Madonna Learning Center. 
Please welcome Joe Gilbert, Executive Director of the Madonna Learning Center. Thank you, Joe, for being here. Thank you for having me. It's great to have you on the show. The, sh the show has been inspired by our schools that are located in Germantown that help people of all abilities. And yours is the newest, by the way. So please share with our audience if they've driven down Poplar, certainly they've noticed complete new campus. Tell us a little bit about Absolutely. it. Absolutely. We have been in existence in 69. We used to be located in the Burclair area, but in 96, we bought the old Germantown Church of Christ building and have put Band-Aids on that building for years. And then finally, last year, we broke ground on a new facility and just renovated and expanded. And we moved in in August of this year, and it was just an, it's just a wonderful building. Well, it's very inviting. Uh, the architecture is gorgeous. I had the opportunity to be at the ribbon cutting and take a tour. Um, it's a place with just a lot of love. So we really, really are happy that you're in Germantown. Well, tell us a little bit about the programming uh, and services that you offer to your students. Sure, absolutely. We provide a nurturing, faith-based, educational, social, and academic environment for children and adults with special needs. Um, it used to be they graduated at 16, but now they stay and we continue our services. Our students are not on a diploma track. They are um, taught skills that they would need in order to gain employment. So we have a full academics uh, program in the school age, ages starting at eight, right now, age five, and our oldest in the adult program is 31. So we do a lot of uh, a lot of the basic academics of your reading and math. We do have an IEP that the students follow. That is each year a goals different goals are set forth, and along with the parents and with our occupational therapist and speech therapist, and we develop a plan for the the students for the year that's individualized. And so we also provide music, adaptive PE, art, yoga, creative movement, and a lot of dances and same events that they would get in you know the school system so. oh that's wonderful yeah. well just like i've asked with our other guests uh, please share with us uh, not all of your students come from germantown do you how far away or how close what is we the do. range we have some students coming from mississippi from um, all over the memphis area as well as fayette county so we have a number of students coming from fayette county in uh, northern memphis so um, we do serve a, a wide variety of children. We uh, serve children with autism, cerebral palsy, Down syndrome, and rare genetic disorders. Well, and you, or if you could elaborate a little bit, you, you mentioned that some of your students are there uh, as old as 31. So mm -hmm. tell us some about a little bit about the adult programming, so sure. to speak. Sure, absolutely. Mm -hmm. We have a work-based learning program where our students start at age 18. They work for about uh, the first couple of years we worked very hard on getting them ready for employment. What does it take? And then the next two years they're actually out in the community working with a supervisor, learning the different job skills. And then from there, once they're employed, we also provide a part-time program for them to come back and continue to do some work within the community and also volunteerism into the community. Well, and I do know that our uh, GMSD, our local school district, uh, started a, a focus group to be able to get adults ready for the workforce in our community and that's ongoing right now and yes. I'm sure Madonna is part of that oh, as yes, well. Oh yes, we are, yes. We have really enjoyed those meetings and collaborating with everybody and trying to reach out into the community of, of Germantown to say we got some great kids here to hire so or adults. And well, and I do know that the Civic Clubs are involved. I know mm -hmm. my Kiwanis Club uh, are regulars at Madonna and help mm -hmm. out a great deal. Please tell us a little bit about other programs and activities that go on at the school sure. that uh, benefit the community, so to speak. Sure. Well, we also have after-school programs. So we let a lot of students who need volunteer work or service hours. They come in after school and are part of our art program, our music program, our sports program. And then we also have a summer camp that runs most of the summer that a lot of students will get in their service hours then. Also, practicum teachers needing some extra hours or experience working with children with special needs. And so they um, come in during the summer, that gives them opportunities. We're also out in the community a lot at uh, work-based instruction, as well as um, we do a, Chris, a couple the Christmas play at the GPAC that's coming up in December. And then we have a gala 
make sure you sell me a ticket to both of those. Absolutely. I said sell me one, <laughs> not give me one. Uh, we have time for just another question or so. Just like I asked my previous guest, uh, all, the, all of these schools are, are nonprofits and probably have 501c3s of some form. You raised a significant amount of money to build a brand new school and a beautiful campus, but tell us about any of your other needs and how our community and how the city can help. Absolutely. We have two major fundraisers, although we just added a third one this last um, fall. We had our first four miler that was held out by the Knowledge Tree on Exeter, and that was a uh, big success. But we also have a Christmas play that is performed at the GPAC, and we moved it there three years ago, but Paul Chandler just said, I'm going to give this a shot and see how it works. And within the fir very first performance, it was standing room only, so we were pretty excited that it filled three performances. This is now going on our third year, so we're looking forward to another good season there. That's a fundraiser. And then in February, uh, we have a big gala that is held at Christian Brothers High School, February 20th, and that's a big fundraiser for us as well. We have a wish list on our website of things that we might need. Um, there's a big list. Plus, we love volunteers to come in and tutor with our children and to do, we do a lot of day of caring projects. Right. Thank you. Thank you so much, Joe, for being here today. Well, thank you for being here and joining us. This has been such an inspirational show. I'd like to thank all of my guests for the hard work they do on behalf of the students and families at their schools. If you'd like more information on any of the schools from today's show, please find them on the web at the following website addresses listed on your screen. I'd like to thank you at home as well as our guests today on Focus on Germantown. If you'd like more information about this or any other show on Germantown Municipal Television, please visit www.gmtvonline.org. Thanks for being with us. We'll see you when Focus on Germantown returns next month.